Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Psychedelic Insights. Today, Adam, Steve, and I will be talking about long-acting psychedelics um, like MDMA and psilocybin, uh, you know, shorter-acting psychedelics, maybe some of the next-generation ones being developed right now. And we're also going to touch a little bit of, on these non-hallucinogenic psychoplastogens, you know, the, that are being developed by these private companies like Delix, uh, Ansero, Solera. Also, I believe a Thai is working on it too, but it's a little bit further behind in development for them. But anyways, the reason we wanted to make this video is because, you know, we've been getting some interesting data coming out from these shorter acting psychedelics, especially from, you know, small pharma two weeks ago. I think we, all of us here were pretty much blown away by those results. And, uh, you know, we just wanted to have a conversation about this um, right here uh, and talk about it, give our thoughts you know, speculate a little bit about, you know, maybe these short acting psychedelics, you know, it's always been talked about that obviously if they work, they're going to scale better. But what I'm starting to think is, I think it's possible that for a lot of people, these shorter acting psychedelics may work even better for memory. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to pass it off to Adam here because Adam has more experience with psychedelics and maybe anyone I've ever met in my entire life. Um, and, uh, you know, I myself have tried, I think Steve too has tried uh, longer acting psychedelics, uh, like psilocybin, LSD. But um, Adam, just wanted to hear your thoughts on this in terms of like depression, anxiety, mental health disorders. What are you looking at here with these longer and shorter acting psychedelics? All right, guys. Sorry. So in regards to longer acting and shorter acting psychedelics, I think there's going to be a place for both of them. Uh, so I guess the argument that is made for longer acting psychedelics is that the results or they're speculating that the results are more durable. Uh, they'll be more though. They will last a bit. They will last longer. Um, I don't agree with that. I think it's about how profound and significant the experience is, uh, even if it is a 15 minute experience. And I say this because let's use DMT in, as, as an example. Um, a DMT experience is anywhere between, let's say, seven to like 15 minutes, like in that range. If you're getting a breakthrough experience, it's going to get closer to that at 15 minute time. And also a lot of these companies are trying to push that out further, right? So I think Cybin is trying to target 45 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, so, but let's use these this 15 minute um DMT experience as the this uh example in this example. Uh there's time dilation within that experience. Um, you you it feels tremendously longer uh than it actually is. So in regards to how long you're feeling that you're under the influence of that psychedelic and how profound the psychedelic is, DMT from where I'm sitting uh, and my own personal experiences knock the so knocks the socks off any other psychedelic and the comparisons are, it, you just can't compare. So that's in regards to depression and anxiety. Um, I think an arg argument can be made with for psilocybin or maybe even lsd if people are let's actually use psilocybin i think we'll put lsd in the corner right now for psilocybin in regards to let's say working through ptsd um because if you want to really target the root of something and kind of process the trauma behind it um psilocybin is equipped to do that you're under the influence for longer you can work through it with a therapist there's just a lot more you can do uh with psilocybin in regards to specifically targeting um some type of trauma in your life so i think if you want if i was going to sum up my perspective around it i think generally dmt or shorter acting psychedelics most likely will be what people choose and what people can fit into their day-to-day -day. just makes more sense and the therapeutic relief you could get with something like dmt which is what i'm using as the example here for the shorter acting psychedelic is very very significant uh and it shouldn't be um overlooked because it's only a 15 minute experience within that 15 minutes you can completely completely just uh separate from any uh anxiety or depression that you've been feeling for a very long time and come out of it feeling like you're reborn it's pretty miraculous um i hope that answers the question 
I mean, that was just very well said, Adam, and it, it made me think about a lot of things. Um, first off, before I get uh, keep on going, I just would like to say we are not, you know, recommending anyone self treat with psychedelics. Um, just wanted to put that out there. With that being said, let's keep it going. Um, Adam, that was very well said. Um, and it's making me think a lot about, you know, I think everyone gets these for the people it works for. I think the antidepressant effects are different for everyone. You know, like you said, with the longer acting, maybe you could get to the root cause, but maybe getting to the root cause is not as crazy as it sounds like maybe that's not always the best idea. Maybe like, for example, I'll, I'll, I'll say something here. Um, again, I've only tried longer acting psychedelic, but, and this is just me personally, my personal favorite experiences that I felt like I grew the most from for me, like I've had trips where getting to the root causes was too painful sometimes and I wasn't ready to be seeing what I was shown I'm sure and one day I would like to tackle these with um maybe in the future get psychedelic therapy I don't know but it was too much for me to handle and it actually made me worse after the trip and I, I don't think people understand that that's possible with that being said I've also had great experiences with psychedelics and those experiences were actually I was not inside of my head I was actually I feel like what benefited me the most was seeing how small my problems were when looking at how incredible the world is and how much we don't know about. Like, listen, I feel like, and I don't know, Adam, maybe you could, uh, you could talk more on this and same with you, Steve. I feel like with, with DMT, for example, you're not really, you know, you're not going through the storyline in your head of, Oh, when I was like five years old, maybe like, uh, I was abused. I'm just giving an example here. Like, I feel like maybe with DMT, you literally just get sent into another freaking dimension and you're like, holy. And then you come back from that experience and you're like, holy crap. Like my problems are so small. Like there's a whole nother world out there. You, you know what I'm saying? Is it making sense? Absolutely. I think that's a good point. Like you brought up with the root cause. Cause like you said, DMT, like you're, it's so intense that you're you're more so just engaged in what you're going through like in the moment like how the trip is what you're seeing what you're experiencing during your trip and like you were talking about with the root cause with like psilocybin for instance yeah i think some people aren't really expecting how hard it's going to hit them you know because they've been like suppressing whatever they've been dealing with for you know however many months or years or whatever and then they have a, a longer psychedelic experience and perhaps it hits them very early in the trip and then that's all they can think about. And it kind of like dampens their experience more than allowing them to work through it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a, re it's a really good point. Um, it's, you, again, what you said about um, they're maybe confronting things that they've put to the side for years, maybe. And then it hits them like a train, um, which is, you know, I'm, I'm assuming it's why it's very important that, you know, we have psychological support in the future with these with these drugs uh, at least as much as possible um another thought could be uh using a shorter acting psychedelic to, to kind of prime someone and kind of get them out of that depressive cycle initially so that they can kind of do the deeper work on the trauma um, with longer acting psychedelics down the line because sometimes you just need to break that cycle of depression mm -hmm. uh, in order to, to like just empower the person so that they can start looking into the root causes of what what was causing the depression uh, on a greater scale so adam i know i've actually i've spoken with you about this and actually the other psychonauts that i've spoken with agree 100 percent. for instance they say that 5-MeO, there's nothing that beats, that's, this is what they tell me, there's nothing that beats a good 5-MeO experience, but they say it is horrible for someone's first experience with psychedelics. Um, maybe it's different with someone with treatment-resistant depression, for example, I'm not sure, but do you feel like um, NNDMT, uh, does it fit that same, you know, is it also too intense for if someone's first experiencing psychedelics do you think for a lot of people dmt would be too much just curious what you would think on this so with nn dmt compared to 5meo dmt you have a bit more wiggle room um and what i mean by wiggle room is you can give somebody a lower dose of nn dmt 
and they can and it's not that overwhelming uh you can still feel where you are you're not blasted off into any place you definitely get visual uh like a, a visual hallucinations but you kind of feel the body load you see kind of like color enhancements significant and you get very very like significant uh visual hallucinations but it's not overwhelming uh and a lot of times dmt uh, for some people is met with a lot of psychedelic euphoria, so that can calm the nerves as well. Um, now, the good part about NNDMT is that as you titrate higher, uh, you can actually get close to those five MEO DMT experiences, those mystical, very profound experiences. So let's say at about 25 milligrams of N NNDMT, uh, you can yield these like ego death experiences that people are getting on 5-MeO DMT. Granted, it won't be the same exact uh, ego death experience that you would get on 5-MeO. Obviously, 5-MeO is just, it's a different beast. Um, it's So many people report that it's not as colorful. Uh, in my experience, there was still color there. It just wasn't as significant as NNDM, as NNDMT. Um, but that doesn't matter. The point is with 5-MeO, you can you get to those ego death experiences very, very quickly. And um, you just kind of get thrown there. And with NNDMT, if you're titrating upwards carefully, you can yield, uh, you can get up to those ego death experiences. And it's, in my opinion, there's just more wiggle, wiggle room with NNDMT. NNDMT is much more accessible, in my perspective, to 5-MeO. I would never, ever, ever give a new Psychonaut 5-MeO DMT. I think... Uh, it it would just be way, way too much. Um, you'd have to build them up to it. Um, so I think NNDMT is just, there's, like I said, there's just a lot more wiggle room there and it's more equipped for people who have not done psychedelics before. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, I guess letting go and ego death here when, when it comes to these psychedelics, you know? So I know for a fact that with the longer acting psychedelics, you could resist you can resist and uh, i know because i've had trips where i didn't let go and it was very painful i was just holding on couldn't let go um with these shorter acting psychedelics do you even have a choice when you take a dose that's i guess let's let's say adam these doses that they're using in these trials do that do these people even have a choice about letting go and like ego death and stuff like that or they're in there whether they like it or not um so it's variable. Uh, I think I've had, uh, there are, ex like, I've, I'm aware of many experiences where people do, like, they don't let go in DMT experience and, and in DMT experiences, and they can be uncomfortable. Um, um, from my opinion is, if you give them a proper breakthrough dose, it's tough to kind of um, hold on. Because, like I said, it's typically accompanied with a lot of psychedelic euphoria and you just feel really nice. So you're more inclined to just kind of release and surrender to the situation. But the thing is, it's just not black and white across the board. It's really different for everyone. So I would say the the and the DMTs, uh, there is it would be tougher to not to try to maintain control throughout the experience. But I think if you were stubborn enough, you you probably could. Uh, and it would probably be slightly uncomfortable, but with psilocybin, LSD, or the other long-acting psychedelics, you could definitely resist um, surrendering to the experience, and it can lead to a very, very uncomfortable experience. I, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I just want to bring it, let's bring it back now to, I guess, investing in the sector. Uh, Steve, I'm going to pose this question to you. Are you more interested in one of the, one or the other? Or do you want to personally be diversified across these psychedelics, including non-hallucinogenic? Or again, like I said, is there one that you're specifically looking at? That's a good question. I want to say that I'm interested in the one that works the best, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, diversified is the best way to go, of course. Um, I will say that I'm a little more skeptical on the longer acting psychedelics, just from a cost perspective. Like, you know, because at some point insurance is going to get involved. Of course, Most yeah. people aren't going to be able to afford this out of pocket. It's it can be very expensive paying for a therapist for multiple hours, and two therapists in some cases, right? Yes, yes, and which I believe is probably better. You know what I mean? Uh, they yeah, can yeah, keep yeah. each other in check for the most part. 
But yeah. the shorter acting is, from a cost perspective, going to be more effective, more efficient. You know what I mean? You got you're in, you're in there for an hour tops under the trip, then you you maybe have another hour with your therapist versus you know eight hours, six hours with a psilocybin trip, an LSD trip. They're in there for an exorbitant amount of time. And it's like, it's opportunity cost. You know, some of these people have families some of these people have kids. Like how often are they going to need to be in there doing these long duration trips once a week, you know, with these shorter acting, they could do it once a week. And it would be close to a normal therapy session that you would go, you know, go see your therapist for an hour, go home to your family and do other stuff versus like, Oh, I'm, this is like a whole day. I have to miss work or I have to do this on a weekend or there's a lot there in regards to just the timeliness of some of these longer acting ones. As far as the non hallucinogenic, it's whether or not they come to find out that the experience is necessary. Right. You know what I mean? If, yeah. if we come to find out that the experience is what is the beneficial aspect of these psychedelics, then I believe that shorter acting is going to be the way to go hmm. on as for the clinical trials though, non hallucinogenic will be a little easier because you can, there's, there's a true placebo with a non hallucinogenic, you know what I mean? With these uh, psychedelic trials, there's not a true placebo because people know whether they're tripping or whether they're not, you know, like, okay, I'm obviously in the placebo group. I don't feel shit. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah it's a good point um i like the way you're thinking with all this um by the way i will touch on in terms of you know potentially asking someone to come in once a week i think actually what makes these psychedelics um so promising and i've talked about it in an interview with florian brandon srini um with adam is that you know the current standard of care for serious you know treatment resistant depression is esketamine which does require you going once a week the first month and subsequently twice a week um no subsequently once every two weeks for the next couple of months what may see psychedelic so promising is that they're showing that after one dose people are in a lot of cases not depressed for months at a time which is really incredible um but i think i'm with you that short acting is i feel like it's kind of the most de risk and it has maybe the most upside. Um, well, actually, probably non-hallucinogenic has the most upside, but I feel like short acting is the safest out of all of these. That's my personal take. My portfolio is, you know, really concentrated on short acting psychedelics. That that um, so I am not that diversified, and they, that there is a risk with that. Um, but you know, back to non-hallucinogenic. Um, I mean, my question is. How much better are they going to work than the current antidepressants? What seems clear to me is that if they do work, they're going to be very rapid acting. That seems to be clear that if they do work, they're not going to take weeks to work. But, you know, how much are they going to beat placebo by in these trials? And, you know, we didn't even talk about microdosing here. Um, if microdosing works, does that mean that there's a better chance of these non-hallucinogenic drugs working? I'm not sure, but... um. Adam, I would like to hear your take uh, in terms of investing in the space. I know the people who watch this channel know that you're bullish on NNDMT. Um, how do you feel about uh, investing in non-hallucinogenic? Does it even interest you at all? Um, from an investment perspective, not yet. Uh, I just okay. think uh, I'd need to see kind of more data coming out and then I would feel more comfortable uh, jumping into it. Um, I do think that the psychedelic experience is necessary for uh, some of the uh, antidepress the de antidepressant anti anxiety effects. I will say that sure, we probably could see some type of impact on depression and anxiety uh, without the psychedelic effect. But like I said, it's it's up in the air. I don't know. Would have to see how these psychoplastogens kind of uh, yeah. what the data looks like in trials. With that said, though, if they do show some type of e efficacy in regards to anxiety and depression, I think that would be interesting only because if you have an antidepressant 
for example, with like a higher safety profile profile that's not habit forming, uh, that you can come off of just like just stop and you don't have to worry about withdrawing or anything like that. I think that would be very advantageous for psychoplastogens. Now, furthermore, um, that could also be someone's first step before they actually try actual psychedelic um, drugs. So people who are kind of apprehensive about doing psychedelics, they could try psychoplastogens first, see how that works for them, and they can graduate to um, actual psychedelic drugs. Now, with that said, like to build on this even more, um, we have stuff that's over the counter like ashwagandha um, and other um, supplements that have shown to have an effect on anxiety and depression. And you can buy them over the counter. If psychoplastogens are just as effective as something like that, then I would be like, OK, um, like, I don't know how interesting that would be. I'd want to see more a more significant impact on anxiety and depression than some of these over the counter supplements people can get off Amazon. So it's interesting you mentioned that maybe the psychoplastogens are the first thing they try. Um, you know, that's the maybe the first line of treatment, perhaps, um, before they would even try a, a normal psychedelic. I've also heard people say that I've heard that companies are actually looking at doing a, a macro dose of a hallucinogenic drug. And then in order to keep the antidepressant effect going, then they actually keep them on a maintenance dose of non-hallucinogenic yeah i was gonna say i, I believe there's gonna be a place for everything at some point you know like perhaps these longer duration trips will be you know more beneficial for longer and then you know they'll come in ever so often for uh, a short acting psychedelic and then they will do like a daily non-hallucinogenic perhaps just a thought yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, I think we could all recognize here that I think, um, again, mental health is not a one size fits all approach. I think it's going to be different for everyone. And I'm really curious to, you know, see more data coming in on these drugs. Um, and I'm really excited. Uh, those results from small pharma the other day just like reminded me, like, we're like, we're not, <laughs> we might have been early to the party, but we're not wrong about our investments. At least me, I made a, I don't, Steve, you may have timed some of your thoughts <laughs> better than I, I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, just those results were just like, holy crap. I mean, 11 out of 12 people in remission from depression, from DMT a month later, uh, really crazy stuff. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Do you guys have anything else to add? Uh, I'm okay with this. I think that um, I've said everything I need to yeah. say. Yeah, that sounded good to me. Okay. Um, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and also follow us at Psyched Insights on Twitter. Thank you and have a good one. Thanks, everyone.